My name is Pat Hibbard. I'm an infectious disease physician at Massachusetts General Hospital, and I'm also a professor of pediatrics at Harvard Medical School. Single strain probiotics versus communities of microorganisms. So it's really interesting to think about what probiotics are. Everybody knows they're live microorganisms that do good things. But are they just one bacteria that's changing the gut? Almost sounds, it sounds a little bit far-fetched. Do we need two? Do we need a community? And so right now it's really interesting to think about how a single organism might work. It would have to be a very special organism, wouldn't it, if it was going to do a lot of stuff all on its own. And there is a new term that is being discussed a lot at the moment, and this is the term keystone species. These are bacteria, or they might be other microorganisms, that have much more of a role than we might expect based on the number of bacteria that are there. So a probiotic could be what they call a keystone species, i.e. have a lot more impact than we would predict, in which case it is possible that probiotics will work as single organisms. However, at the same time, maybe actually giving a community of organisms, and one of the hot topics at the moment is fecal transplants, where a whole community of organisms are given to patients who have refractory disease caused by Clostridium difficile. And in that circumstance, it doesn't look as though a single probiotic is going to be very helpful. There was a study published recently in The Lancet suggesting that basically a single or even two organisms, um, as in was uh, studied in The Lancet, just are not effective in preventing uh, Clostridium difficile uh, diarrhea. So in, in certain circumstances, it may be necessary to give a community of organisms. But that makes life a lot more complicated. How do we decide which organisms are in that community? And will they work well together? They might work well if we're taking a normal healthy person who hasn't got any problems, has not recently taken antibiotics, and give those organisms to somebody who's having a lot of trouble with Clostridium difficile diarrhea, which is caused by too much antibiotics. But we don't really know what the best combination is. And also, the last thing we want to do is give something bad from one person to another, and that could certainly come across. So there are a lot of issues if we're giving a lot of organisms. And remember, some of the organisms that may be in the stool that is being transplanted, we can't culture, we can't study in the ways that normally we would uh, study. So I think there are some hopes that single organisms, maybe as keystone species, or that concept might work as probiotics. But it's not impossible that we may need to transplant, in certain cases, a community of organisms. All I know is that right now it's a very exciting time to be thinking about both ends of the spectrum, and we don't really have the final answers yet. We have promising data about single organisms, but not for C. diff diarrhea. New Molecular Technologies, Omics. So the next question, after thinking about whether or not probiotics are safe, the next question is, are they doing things that will help us? Are they beneficial for us? Are they um, going to treat something, a problem that we have? Are they going to prevent a disease? And again, I think we're hoping that these new technologies, they're called omics technologies, will enable us to figure out what we need to look at to figure out whether or not the probiotics are doing something useful and beneficial for us. 
And the third thing that the omics technologies might be able to do is to help us understand who's going to do really well with a probiotic, who might not respond at all. How annoying to be taking a probiotic that doesn't do you any good at all. So I think these omic technologies will help us understand a lot more about the uh, probiotics, the microorganisms that are in or uh, on top of us, on our skin, etc., on uh, other superficial surfaces. But there is also another thing that might make this a lot more complicated. This is the genes that we have that may also be making proteins and other products that would interact with the microbes. So there's a heck of a lot going on at the moment to try and understand better how these new omics technologies could really revolutionize how we understand probiotics might work.